Feel good. Feel great. Yep. No, I'll be playing on Saturday. What, can you tell us at all what you've been dealing with? Um, just, you know, nicks and bruises, what you go through dur during a regular season. Um, like last year, we only had, we only played eight games. So that was like the luxury of, you know, playing fresh every day. But um, now it's a regular season. So just, you know, little nicks and bruises that you get over the season. So what happened against Maryland? Was that just kind of aggravating, aggravating an injury you already had? Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. So. What are the things you're doing to try to keep yourself healthy, kind of get, get past this and be healthy for the first time? Um, you know, doing a lot um, in terms of massages, uh, rehabilitation, um, all like sports science. Our, our training room is really up to date with um, getting our bodies right, cryo, um, getting in a float tank. Anything that can get my body right, I do it. Um, it was really um, crucial, you know, I, I got my rest, but it was also I can make my corrections and do, um, you know, watch film, get on the film and uh, look at stuff that other um, teams are looking at and, um, yeah, improve my gameplay. Is it, your, is it your opinion if you guys are practicing and preparing like a championship team, can you, did y'all go through any metamorphosis after the Oregon game or do you feel like the prep is always there? But just what has it been like the last several weeks? I mean, do you feel like you're you know, mm -hmm. you gotta know what it, takes. it it was just the one the sense of urgency and two you know the standard we understood that we weren't playing to the standard and um, you know we have to hold ourselves accountable for um, our responsibilities on the field. Did anybody address that? Any, any players stand up in, uh, in front of the team and address those kind of things? Um, we all kind of just came together and understood that you know what the way that we were playing wasn't up to par, wasn't up to Ohio State par, and wasn't of the standard. Um, so we all stood up and, you know, promised to each other that we need to play our best game. Can you, can you state that standard? I mean, can you put that into words? What is that standard? Um, you know, like goals, like um, small goals, like, you know, got to hold a team to 100 yards rushing, you know, um, you know, winning the down and distance, winning um, field position, stuff like that, and setting small goals for every game so that, you know, guys have a game, uh, a goal going into the game and how they need to play and what standard they need to play at. Um, it was just the depth and, you know, that was good, but also it's hard because um, with experience, with experience comes confidence and some guys, you know, you needed to go through those games and get those reps, those game reps in so that you can build confidence in yourself. And that's why you see guys like Tyleek Williams, um, you know, um, Ty Hamilton stepping up to the plate and showing up in big games. You had a breakout year last year. Um, are you even better this year? I don't know if it's like strength wise, technique wise, what you put some ways you're even better this year after your breakout. I feel my motor and my ability to play deep um, into games, you know, going from 32, 35 reps to 42, 50 reps, um, and being able to sustain that for a whole game. Haskell, you just said that it's crucial having the release of Gil Stark in the bye week. What do you personally feel about bye weeks? Is it better to maybe have a week off in the middle of the season to recoup, or would you rather just play through and kind of get it all over with? I think it's good that you have a week off in the sense that, you know, there's now film out there on yourself and you are able to, you know, watch yourself, see how you actually play because you, you're so busy, you know, watching other teams, you never really watch yourself and understand how other teams are game planning for your, for you and those around you. So it's, it's really good. It's a learning experience and it's also the ability to, you know, just catch up on film and how to, you know, critique yourself. You know, just don't be relaxed. Yeah, they have a lot of weapons, um, both at receiver and running back. Um, and so just not being relaxed, being able to, you know, finish games, that's that's huge. Yeah, no, they have a great offensive line, you know, a lot of big dudes, and um, we just have to play our best game.
taking care of your mental fortitude just as much as like physical. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what that looks like in the, within the program? You know, just being very transparent. You know, he's a very transparent coach. And he, you know, his door is, open, is always open, whether he's in a meeting or not. You know, we can always come to him and talk to him. And we have the resources around the facility. You know, whenever guys are like homesick, freshmen are homesick, um, when dudes are going through things off the field, you know, we have resources and people to go to for those answers other than our family and friends. I mean, yeah, it just comes to what I said, you know, in the beginning of the season after our loss, you know, there's a lot of ball left to play. Everybody thought everything was set in stone in the beginning of the season, like you still have to play the whole season and get to the, you know, to the championship, you know. So the goal has always been to get to the Big Ten and, um, you know, just you can't sleep on, no, on any team in the Big Ten at all because everybody's good. Um, it's been, it's been really unique. You know, a lot of guys that, you know, weren't leaders or weren't looked at as guys as leaders are stepping up and they're speaking. And, you know, even though, you know, you have guys like me who are captains, you know, it's just, I'm a captain, that's all. But there's a bunch of leaders on this team and those who have leadership roles. Who are some of the guys who maybe weren't leaders at the start of the year who feel like have become leaders now? I feel that, you know, my man Jerron Cage has really stepped up and been outspoken. Guys like Ronnie Hickman have stepped up, you know, in big ways. Um, dudes like, you know, Cody Simon, um, Tommy Eichenberg, you know, guys like that. Um, from my standpoint on the defensive side, I can't speak for the offensive side, but um, I know for me personally, those guys have really stepped up and made their voice known. How much of a role do you think that's played in the defensive improvement that those guys have stepped up and they have started to set the tone in the defensive room? Um, and it's the aspect of, you know, they're showing their confidence. They're showing that, you know, you can trust in me that I'm going to do my job on the field, and that's all that really matters. For me personally, yeah. um, I think it's just for me. I I really like lo like to lock in um, as the game gets closer. Um, once you know, just like re any regular week, once I believe in the game plan, once I understand, like when we get to Thursday, um, once I I need to fully understand the game plan and you know be crisp and that's our walkthrough. And that's our last dress up before the game. So um, for me personally, it's just shutting out. Um, everything off the field and getting on the film and um, getting locked in with the game plan. Can you talk a little bit about the sort of stigma that, that comes with football players and like discussing mental health, things that might be affecting them outside of football, and uh, what that sort of looks like for you and maybe this I think the stigma is also just, you know, it's Ohio State, you know, it's high standards and, you know, the fans are fanatics and um, they know the standard that we, that is, uphold um, here in Ohio. So it's hard because um, a lot of guys, you know, you're on your phone, you have social media, you have friends, you have family. And those are the things that guys have to um, deal with off the field. You know, some guys' journeys happen a lot faster than other guys, you know. Um, some happen in two, maybe three years. Some might happen in their fifth um, fifth year, you know. So it's just hard. Um, those are the things that guys that um, guys deal with off the field. You know, why aren't you playing? Why aren't you, you know, holding up that expe expectation? Because everybody on this field was a five star, four star at some point in high school, and they come come out of high school being the top dog, and then now you're around a, a whole bunch of top dogs, and it's hard when you know you already had that expectation in high school, and then when you get to college, you know everything's equated. So it's just you have to start from scratch, and that's what. Um, some cats, you know, um, deal with uh, off the field. Um, just comes back to what I said earlier, confidence, you know, getting those game reps, not only game reps, but, you know, practice reps and understanding, you know, fully diving in and believing in um, our scheme and um, what we do um, on defense.
Mm -hmm. I think, you know, not only just Indiana, but you have to prove yourself every week, um, especially coming off a year like last year. A lot of people are, you know, the stigma was that, you know, Ohio State's just favored, Ohio State's given this, but um, comes again, we have to prove ourselves every week um, in that aspect. I mean, we played six six games this time last year. We were going into the Big Ten, so um, like for instance, uh, coming up for air, you know, catching your breath, guys getting healthy like myself, um, and just getting ready for the long haul, the second half of the season. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I think it's just, it's it is crazy to think about. You know, it's just, it was a rough year, um, COVID year, and especially just um, adjusting to everything that was thrown at us. But um, yeah, it was it was a unique year, crazy year, but we got it done. Yeah, every game is an el elimination game from this point on. Like, you know, you have teams like Penn State who are undefeated. You guys, um, you got other teams like, you know, Michigan State that are, that are undefeated. And so it's just every game from here on out is an elimination game. And that's why it's um, it's crucial. It's a crucial moment in the season. And it's a long haul. Can you look back on last, last year, question right here. Crazy for you, like, uh, middle of the global pandemic, mm -hmm. then you have your breakout season. I just look back on last year as a blessing, you know, um, not only being able to have life and come out of my situation, but also um, just being able to play ball. You know, it was the first time any of us experienced something out of our um, out of our hands taken away from us. And um, for us to come out of that and be strong and finish the way that we did was very unique, in my opinion. Almost a developmental year, you know. I feel that this year is uh, unique because we have young minds. We have a lot of energy. Um, those years we had a lot of experience, but um, I feel that this year is just every year is unique, and every year comes with different faces and different names. And I feel that um, this year is just it's just different. It's just different. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much.